So for this concept, we're a little bit more finalized with all of this because we already worked, did some typography work, but we're never done. So let's make some copies and see how we can make it a little bit better and tweak it. So let's try, we have this Roboto slab, which has kind of inspired us to play around with the last one, but let's, you know, there's thinner weights that we can work with. And there's other slab serifs. There's also serifs. And what makes things even more complicated is you can even change the spacing between the characters more. So let's edit the tracking. Let's do 200 this time. And we can make it even bigger. So I'd probably do this for about a page. And what we need to determine is which one A, will resonate best with our target audience, B, be the most flexible logo that we can create, and C, be very readable and, of course, liked by the client. So all these decisions, we may like the elegance of the top one, but maybe the Sushi Club, it's not strong when you zoom out. Uh, these other three are strong. So it could be that we stick with the original and present that as our kind of pushing it concept, although this is kind of a little bit more on the safe side, but the fact that we're using all these little icons, perhaps that's a little bit different than what they originally expected. There is also the fact that we can put this into more of a seal orientation. So right now it's a seal graphic, but what if we were to add a border? Would that change the strength of the logo? Would it be more obvious from a distance? Would it feel more like a complete logo if we had had it in a traditional seal? And there's even the option of duplicating this. And instead of just having a straight line, what if we added a little bit of kind of a crinkle edge? So we can go up to effect, go to distort and transform. So effect, distort and transform this is a really cool trick. I teach this in another one of my classes, but I'm gonna show you here. I'm going to go down to zigzag and we're going to be able to create a really neat rounded zigzag. So instead of a corner, I want to do a smooth and I want to reduce the size and I want to increase the segment. So how many little ridges there are. I just want a little bit of a bump just like that. So that could add a little character. We can go back through and continue to do different iterations. So let's eliminate, that one's too thin, that's not gonna work. This one doesn't seem to have the flair of personality in the typography. And this is when the clean, chunky sans serif is not working because we have this wonderful details here and this is a very detailed logo. So the font is not matching with that detailed nature. So I'm just gonna eliminate this option. And there's kind of a big difference between these two. There's the only difference, I mean the difference is there's spacing between the characters here and it's smaller. So this is more readable, like I see Sushi Club quicker. So that's good, but it loses a bit of its elegance and grace when you put it so tight together and so big. This one seems more balanced. So you can see like, we it doesn't feel so top heavy. This one feels more balanced. So for that case, that one's gone. So for this one, we really just have a difference between straight are without a border, with a border, with a crinkle border. We really just have these, we are all the same concept, all the same concept. This is the second concept. This is our, a little bit more pushing it concept. But when I present anything to a client, I like to put space between them so that they really are defined as separate items. They don't get distracted by looking at the other one. They can see them all, and there's enough ample white space here. So this would be probably a really good way to present it to the client. And hopefully through this whole process, you have brought the client in on some of this. You've been asking them questions. You've been going back and forth. So when you send these logos, hopefully they have already kind of seen some of the research you've done. Maybe they've even talked to you about the user persona. So all that, you're both on the same page. So when you present these, um, there's not going to be as much explaining to do. You're going to be able to tell them about the concept and why it is the way it is and what do the characters mean and why you're doing these three sushis. Well, that's the three 
main items and why this type choice. Uh, but you don't have to go in too much detail because you've already been on this journey with the client. So it should be a very simple presentation. We have the first one safe. We have this one a little bit pushing it. It's still within the boundaries of what they're expecting. And then the third one is going to be that really pushing it. You never know if they're going to like it, but it's worth doing it to start those conversations. So we're going to do a third concept. And then we would have three almost per totally prepared concepts to send to the client. They're going to get this down to one. They're going to be able to pare this down to one. So that moving forward, we start doing brand elements and brand language and really start to get into this. We're already going to have a logo kind of picked out. And so that's going to help us. So I had some time to submit my ideas to a group of other fellow designers in a Facebook group. And I got their ideas on what they thought of the three concepts I've picked so far. They did mention that this concept looked a little too busy. And after some thinking about it for a few days, I can kind of agree with that. We need to go back to something more simple and clean as always. So I had an idea. We have a couple of these elements we could combine together to create um, a, a better concept to present to the client. So what I'm going to do is I have a knife here. I have a knife here that I got from this other concept and I'm going to take one of these chopsticks. And so I have a chopstick and I have a knife. What if they were to cross over? So it's the combination of the preparation and the combination of the experience of eating coming together, crossing over and, and becoming one entire experience. So that was the thought process about this, but I really want to continue to keep it simple. Let's have the blade be down. So I'm going to have it cross over this way and let's do the chopstick crossing over this way, just make like an X. And right now they don't feel like separate units. So what I can do is simply add with the pen tool, kind of cut out this area. We can add a shadow or we can cut it out entirely. What I like about cutting it out entirely is I can keep it one ink. If you were to draw a little shadow here, just like this, a little shadow and make it a little bit of a darker gray, It'd be a great shadow. So you see now they look like they're crossing over, but it's two inks. So I have a gray ink and I have white. Well, as simple as you can make logos, the better in terms of how many colors you have to use. So if I were to take this little object and get the, get our shape builder tool and cut out that tiny bit. Now it is one ink color, which of course uh, will be much more simple to use just one ink color. So that's kind of just thinking, how can I make a logo simple, as simple as possible? And then instead of having the monogram S and C here, let's try to simplify because that was the problem with the last logo is although the icons and stuff are kind of cool, it's too complicated. Well, we already have some typography that we liked in the circular seal version. So why not adapt that and save a lot of time? So we have this seal logo. We can even do the same variations that we did before. So that would be really easy to do. We can just deselect all, deselect the borders and see how it looks with these various borders. Here are some final modifications to that logo. I think it is still got a little bit of some elements in there, but I do think it's a lot more simple and love the idea of the crisscrossing knife indicating preparation, mixing with experience of eating. Um, so I think this is a great idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this one instead and present this to the client just like this. But really at this point, when you're talking to the client, it's about the overall concept. They're, they know they're going to, you're going to clearly communicate. This is not super final. We're going to really perfect whatever concept it is later down the road. We're just getting an idea if they like the uh, general shape and elements and typography in the logo. So we have a lot of uh, logo options here. So I wanted to kind of do a bonus kind of section because a lot of people have seen on social media when I was planning this class, they saw my uh, kind of copper gold kind of colored uh, mock-ups to present the logo. And I wanted to show you how I went about doing that. 